As a medical doctor, I worked with some very, very addictive people. People who use heroin, cocaine, alcohol, crystal meth, and every drug known to man. And these people suffer. They lose their health, they lose their beauty, they lose their teeth, they lose their wealth, they lose human relationship, and in the end, they often lose their lives. And yet nothing can force them to give up their addiction. The addictions are powerful, and the question is why? If you want to understand addiction, you can't look at what's wrong with the addiction, you have to look at what's right about it. In other words, what is the person getting from the addiction that otherwise they don't have? And what addicts get are relief from pain, the sense of peace, a sense of control, a sense of calmness, very, very temporarily. And that's what the real question in addiction is not why the addiction, but why the pain. If you want to ask the question of why people are in pain, you can't look at their genetics. You have to look at their lives. And in the case of my highly addicted patients, it's very clear why they're in pain, because they've been abused all their lives. They began life as abused children, physically abused, neglected, sexually abused, abandoned over and over again. And that's why the pain The human brain develops an interaction with the environment. So the kind of environment that a child has will actually shape the development of the brain. The Buddhists have this idea of the hungry ghosts. The hungry ghosts are creatures with large empty bellies and small scrawny necks and tiny little mouths. So they can never get enough. They can never feel this emptiness on the inside. And the addiction is all about trying to feel that emptiness from the outside. From that perspective, you can understand that there's many, many addictions. Yes, there's the addiction to drugs, but there's also the addiction to consumerism, the addiction to sex, to the internet, to food. For each person, there's a different way of feeling the emptiness. But the emptiness always goes back to what we didn't get when we were very small. Many of my patients were actually First Nations Indian people. And they are heavily addicted because the lands were taken away from them and because they were killed and abused for generations, generations, and generations. If you can understand the suffering of these native people and how that suffering makes them seek relief from pain in their addictions, what about the people who are perpetrating it? What are they addicted to? Well, they're addicted to power. They're addicted to wealth. They're addicted to acquisition. They want to make themselves bigger. The addiction to power is always about the emptiness that you try and fill from the outside. If you look at the story about Jesus and Buddha, both of them were tempted by the devil. And one of the things that the devil offers them is power. And they both say no, because they have the power inside of themselves. They don't need it from the outside. They don't want to control people. They want to teach people by example, not through force. So they refuse power. Jesus says the kingdom of God is within. That the power is not outside of yourself, but inside. And the Buddha says, don't worship me. Find the lamp inside yourself. 
Be a lamp unto yourselves. Find the light within. And so as we look at this difficult world, let's not look to the people in power to change things. Because the people in power are very often some of the emptiest people in the world. We have to find that light within ourselves. We have to find the light within communities. And in our own wisdom, in our own creativity, if we find that light within, if we find our own nature, then we'll be kinder to ourselves and we'll also be kinder to nature.